This is the Durston X Mid 1 solid. The X Mid range of tents have been the most sought after tents in recent years. Let me run through some of the specs and then I'll give you my first impressions of this tent. It weighs 837 grams for the tent, including the stuff sack. That weight does not include the tent pegs. There are eight included, which weigh 80 grams, including a small storage bag. There's an optional ground sheet, which weighs 115 grams and is made from a 20D ripstop polyester. Pitching this tent requires it to be staked out in a perfect rectangle. Each of the peaks have a 210D black nylon to add some reinforcement. Even the little grommets that hold the trekking poles in place have an extra bit of webbing just to stop the trekking pole from damaging the fly. The poles can be inserted through the door or the vent with the tip facing upwards and the height of the trekking poles is determined by the tension of the fabric. The fabric used on the outer fly sheet is a 20D sill poly and it has a 2500mm hydrostatic head. The outer fly sheet has two doors with number 5 YKK AquaGuard zips and a buckle at the base to give added reinforcement to the zip in high winds. The outer door is held open using a magnetic tie back. The inner has number 3 YKK zips which are lighter than the outer zip but they're just as reliable. The inner has a large mesh panel on each of the doors just to help with ventilation but it's mainly made up of this solid 15D nylon. The inner door is held open using a simple piece of bungee cord and it's actually very effective. There are two mesh pockets, one at each peak, which have a reinforced hem to give added support. There's also a loop at each peak so you can hang up a lantern or set up a washing line. The bathtub floor is a 20D ripstop polyester. As the floor is polyester, it's not going to be as slippy as you'd find in a sill nylon tent, which means that your sleep mat is far less likely to slip and move in the night. All of the seams are factory taped so you don't have to worry about seam sealing. Even as I sit up straight, I have loads of headroom inside this tent because of the offset position of the poles. And I've even managed to use my Crazy Creek chair in here, which makes being tent bound so much more comfortable. This is my Termrest X-Term in the large size. And as you can see, there's plenty of room inside. Now that all the little details are out of the way, let's get down to my first impressions of it. There's some good points and some bad points, but we'll stay positive for now and stick with the good. <laughs> It's an hour pitch first, which means you can set this tent up in the rain, and it means that the inner of the tent isn't going to get wet. Pitching this tent in bad weather is pretty handy to do because it only needs two trekking poles and four pegs for minimum pitch. That means you can get it up pretty quick, pop all your gear inside, keep it dry, keep it safe, and then get back out yourself and peg out the rest of the tent. The inner of the tent can also be fully removed, which means that in the morning, if it's spilling rain, you can drop down the inner and get that packed away before you go out and brave the elements. All you have to do then is worry about packing up the outer fly sheet. All of the seams are double stitched and double folded to give added strength. And there's extra bar tacking on the high stress points around the hem of the tent. There's so many tie out points on this tent which makes it really sturdy in the wind. There's two guy lines supplied at one for each peak, which is a low stretch guy line that helps to reduce deflection in the wind. I've actually bought the extra strength iron wire and I put those on each of the peaks. I've used the guy lines supplied for the side tie out points because they're extra strength and they're also low deflection. It's just that they're not as good as the iron wire. I've also used these little line locks. For each of the tie out points on the hem of the tent, I use 3mm bungee cord. The additional footprint is tailored for this tent and it attaches to each of the four corners. The footprint can also be used with the outer fly sheet and without the inner tent. This is a really user friendly tent with a door on each side and two massive vestibules, they're absolutely gigantic. You can put your pack in on one side with all your wet gear and have the other side just for your cooking set and you know, to sit down and get in and out of the tent. I sat beside this tent nice and low in really bad weather. The tent's protecting me from the elements and yeah, it's nice to sit down and have a bit of a windbreak from the, from the wind. <laughs> The fabric being a polyester has some really good benefits. Polyester doesn't absorb water, so it's not going to get heavier when it gets wet. It's also not going to stretch, so for a trekking pole tent, that's really important for the structural stability of the tent. The same can't be said for nylon. Nylon is hydrophilic, which basically means that it loves water, and once it gets wet, it holds onto it. It can stretch by 2-4%, to which doesn't sound like a lot, but over the course of a metre of fabric, it can stretch by two to four centimeters, which in a freestanding tent isn't really a big deal. You might just have a bit of a floppy tent, but for a trekking pole tent, the fly sheet is part of the structure. So if it becomes loose during the night, the structure is going to become unstable and that's just not good for anybody. The last thing you want to be doing is getting out in the middle of the night in the spilling rain and having to go and check all your guy lines. I think it's time we talk about a few of the bits that I'm not overjoyed with. <laughs> 
These little corner guy lines here are very, very small. They're so small that it makes it a bit tricky to get a peg in, especially in rocky ground. It just limits where you can put in that peg. These line locks here I found pretty tricky to use. What happens is the tension part of the line gets jammed up inside the groove and then it's very hard to adjust. So just be aware of that. The peak guy lines are not as much of an issue. There's a little sexy tie-out point just here that I have a bit of bungee cord on. And I would love to leave the door like this. But the magnet up here just isn't strong enough to hold it. Once the wind starts going, that'll pop off. And, you know, it'd be just nice to be able to have it. If that magnet was a little bit stronger, it would be able to hold it in that position. It gives you a little bit added protection from the wind from this side. And it means you can leave gear in here and not have it get wet if you like to sit at the door, leave the door open or whatever. So, um, yeah, I do like sitting in the doorway and looking out at the view or whatever, even if it's really windy and all that, I do like sitting outside the tent. So that's, yeah, it's a little thing, but it's little things that matter. <laughs> One little thing that I found to be a bit of a hassle is the additional ground sheet. Basically, as you're trying to pack up the tent, it can get in the way, it hangs down below the tent, and when you're trying to dry the tent at home, it can be a bit of a hassle. So you tend to have to detach it anyway. I'm not gonna complain about it too much because it does do the job and it's very hard because of the shape of the tent to have it nice and taut. But what I might do is attach it to the inner of the tent and not have it attached out to the outer fly sheet. Only time will tell how it performs and I'm sure the Irish weather is gonna put it through its paces. Let me know in the comments below what you think about it and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.